I would like to go over Rabin's reciprocity model in behavioral economics because Matt Rabin was actually my professor when I took behavioral economics in graduate school. So this is a model that I really love. I teach every year. And I think it does a great job of capturing something that's going on in the human heart that probably we evolved to feel a certain way, to have a certain type of utility function in our hearts and the way we react to certain situations. And that's because of the game theory of evolution. So um, this takes a classic game theory situation and allows us to translate the sort of outcomes into how people feel about it um, such that we can more accurately model behavior. So let's imagine here that we have a prisoner's dilemma and we have an economics professor doing a classroom experiment where the students um, can either cooperate or defect. If they cooperate, if they both cooperate, they both get eight. And you know, you can read the table. I won't read the table to you. A lot of times what happens in these situations is that um, you get an outcome that doesn't seem to match up with game theory. And the problem is not with the game theory. The problem is actually with um, the fact that we're assuming people only care about money. Obviously, people care about a lot more than money. They care about the whole situation. They care about whether someone's being mean to them. Um, and this model captures that. So what is reciprocity to begin with? And reciprocity is going to be getting utility from being nice to somebody who's nice to you and also positive utility from being mean to someone who's mean to you. In other words, basically, um, if, if we end up in a situation like this where one person has a lot and the other doesn't have much, then the person who got zero, they are going to get a positive feeling if they punish that other person at some point, maybe in the next round. And if we get a situation where they both cooperated, they might feel a generosity toward that other person such that they're going to get utility from, um, you know, sustaining cooperation or doing something generous to that person in the future. We know this is how people actually are. So this model is a way of formalizing that. And you might ask, why is it worthwhile coming up with this really technical formula that captures reciprocity? And one of the reasons is that if we're trying to develop good online tools, if we're trying to use big data to make accurate predictions of how people will behave or interpret how they are behaving online, we might want a model that can speak well with the data we have. And this is one such model that captures reciprocity. So let's first just label the utility function. And the key feature here is that we have fairness, function and the fairness function captures how fair um, is player one to player two. Now we're going to add the squiggly line when that fairness is actually a perception from the other person because of course people can misperceive whether someone's being mean to them by you know adding their own interpretation. So um, you know f1 is how fair player one is to player two, f squiggle two is how fair player one perceives player two to be. Um, okay, so let's label this. Like most utility functions, player one cares about their own payoff. So this first term in function is actually just classic consumption utility. Or in this scenario, it's just utility over the direct amount of money that that player gets. The second um, part of this utility function is player one's utility over how fair they perceive the other player to be to them. Because of course we get direct disutility if someone's mean to us, direct utility if they're nice to us, just based on the fact that we care about how people treat us generally. That's our utility over other players' niceness toward us. I don't even know if niceness is a name, but um, I am using some of the language that Matt Rabin uses. How, how nice are they to us? And of course, this, um, both of these are going to be importance weights on how much, how important is it to us that the other player be nice to us. And the nice thing about these importance weights is it allows us to think about different people having different importance weights on niceness. Uh, versus this next one, and therefore you can almost capture someone's personality based on their behavior if you can um, come up with a 
vector of importance weights of different parts of the equation to each individual. Okay, and then the last term is the reciprocity term. And this term is really brilliant in how simple it is while still capturing the concept. So it's basically their fairness toward you times your fairness toward them. So if they're mean and this is a negative term, then you get positive utility from also being mean to them because then you have two negatives which become a positive. So you get positive utility from matching mean with mean those both being negative. And you also get positive utility for matching nice with nice. But you get negative utility if they're mean and you're nice, or negative utility if uh, they're nice and you're mean. Now, this of course begs the question, how do we measure fairness? And that's where our fairness function comes in. Now this function I think is really well suited to game theory situations like this. It may not be as well suited to other situations, although I'm sure it works sometimes in other situations. But let's just read the function. So we have um, the fairness of player one to player two is equal to player two's payoff minus a fair amount to give them over the max that player two could have given them minus the minimum player two could have given them. And so I think it helps with this situation to actually do this with a particular box. So let's choose this box up here and let's do player one's fairness to player two in this box. So in this box, player two gets zero. Now here's the tricky part here. We need the maximum that player one could have given player two. So we know that player two actually chose to cooperate in this box. And so it's really about player one's behavior. And player one could have given uh, player two eight, uh, eight, instead gave player two zero. So the maximum is eight, the minimum is zero. And let's plug those into this uh, denominator of the equation. And then a fair amount in this model is going to be halfway between the maximum and the minimum. So between 12 and zero, the fair amount is going to be six. Now, of course, we can tell that in this box, player one is being mean to player two. And so um, this, we're hoping that this whole term comes out negative. And it does, player two gets zero. Um, on average, they were going to get six. So the zero is the less of that is the lower of that. And with this setup, you're actually always going to get either positive one half, negative one half, or zero for every single fairness term. So that, that sort of standardizes fairness terms when you're working with a simple two by two uh, matrix like this. All right, so what I want to do at this point is I would like to come up with one single number, which is player one's utility for player two in this particular box. That's the only one I'm going to do. We've already captured in this box that um, player one's fairness toward player two is equal to negative one half. That's um, zero minus six over 12, negative one half. In this box, player two's fairness toward player one, well, we're hoping it's going to be fair because player two was the one to cooperate in this box. So we're hoping it's going to turn out to be positive one half. And we find out that it is. Let me show you. So I get 12 minus eight over 12 minus four, that's positive one half. And that the hard part here really is figuring out what's the max and what's the min. So in this box, if we're looking for player two's fairness toward player one, we are going to hold constant player one's behavior. So we're, we're saying player one chose to defect, in which case player two could have either given player one 12 or given player one four. So that's our max. 12 and our min 4. And what they actually got, what player 2 actually gave player 1 is 12. That's up here. And a fair amount would have been halfway between 12 and 4, and that's going to be 8. If you plug the numbers in, you get positive 1 half. Okay, so let's come back down here and let's just uh, finish out player 1's utility in this situation. Player one actually gets 12, so their classic consumption utility is 12. We're going to let alpha, the importance weights, just be one, because that's not worth what we're focused on right here. So player two's fairness toward player one, well, we've already figured out in that box, player two is being fair to player one. So player one gets positive utility from that happiness. 
Um, but player one is actually going to get negative utility because player one doesn't like a situation where um, player one's being mean when the other player is being nice. That feel there's a dissonance there. So we have um, importance weight of one. I'll leave that out. We have player two's fairness toward player one times player one's fairness toward player two. This term is a negative number, and we can plug that in to get our actual numbers, but this is really just me showing you how Raven's reciprocity model works, and hoping that some people will start to use this, especially when they're analyzing the game theory using big data of online spaces.